All right, on page 154, we're going to change our structure of this database. We've already done this. We're just going to do a little more advanced. So let's open up Customer, switch to our Design View, click on the Row Selector for Amount Paid. When you do this, you can insert a row and it always goes above whichever row you have selected. So click on Insert Rows, click under Postal Code or in the blank space, and you're going to call this new field Customer Type. Then in Data Type, you're going to use something new called Lookup Wizard. And what that does, it allows you to choose some values either from an existing table or from something that you will type. And this will become part of this table. And it's really pretty cool. It's, you're going to like it when we're done. You do have the choice of several different columns. And right now, we're just going to do one. So click in the first space and type HS. And then hit your down arrow. And I'm on page 156 at the top right now. Type COM. And notice I'm using caps lock. And the last one is UNI. I'm going to turn off my caps lock right now. Then hit next. Make sure that customer type is a label, which it should. And also this right here. Now, you have to pay attention because often people don't pay attention to this and then they have problems later. So pay attention, do you want to store multiple values for this lookup? So that means, can somebody click on one more than one box? In this case, we only want to allow people to choose one of these three types. So we're gonna make sure this is not selected. All right, this is important because it can cause you lots of grief later. All right, hit finish. And now we have customer type, and it just shows short text there. But if you come down here and click on lookup, you see what we just typed. Uh, combo box, row source, and it shows you what each one of these is. And let's see, what else? Allow multiple values. Here's where you chose no, because you put nothing in the box. Now, I'm showing you this because if you do this wrong on accident, this is where you can go fix it so you don't have to redo the whole thing. All right. Next, on page 157, we are going to click the amount paid field again. And we're going to hit insert rows. And now we're going to type call this resources needed, R-E-S-O-U-R, -E and once again, we're going to choose the lookup wizard, but do it a little differently this time. You are going to choose, I will type the values that I want, and now we're going to choose uh, You're going to type audio. And then hit tab. And then you're going to type CDVD and tab and CUSTD tab. And I'm looking at the table on page 157. Ebook and then O L M A N, then O L W R K, then P R M A N. And notice we are not typing the descriptions. S D V D and T X T. Now, I am so far from perfect. I'm going to double check to make sure I typed everything correctly. And it's probably smart if you did so too. Because it's never fun to have to fix things later. Mainly because 
we don't usually notice them until later when you're in the middle of a lot of other things and you're wondering why it didn't work. All right, so now we choose next and this should be called resources needed. Now, this time, number 10 on page 157 says allow multiple values. So people can choose more than one resource. Hit finish. And once again, just so you can see what you did, here is our value list combo box. Here is everything we just typed in. So if you did make a mistake, you can fix it there. Notice the difference. Allow multiple values. We said yes. All right. Just so you know. On page 158, it says to add a calculated field. So this time we're going to click on the returns row selector. And we're going to do insert. And the name is going to be total amount. And this time we are going to choose a calculated field. So click on the down arrow and slide to calculated. Now we're going to write a nifty cool little formula. So much fun. So what we do, we don't even have to type. Double click amount paid in the expressions category. All right, notice it automatically comes up here with the brackets. And if you remember from the lecture in chapter two, the reason why there's brackets is because there is a space and access cannot work with spaces when you're doing expressions. All right, and then you type a plus sign, just click in there and hit plus, and then double click current due. And that pops up there also. Then we're going to say OK. And notice our expression shows up right here. So once again, if you made a mistake, it's very easy to fix it. So we're going to hit Save. And then we're going to close the customer table. All right. Now, you will see what we did here in a minute. Oh, actually, let me just show you. Y'all don't do this. Just watch this. This is pretty cool. In the customer table, you created this customer type. And notice there's no boxes out to the side. So that only allows somebody to choose one. Uh, also, something nifty cool. If you click here, you can add some more in case you messed up. It's a new thing. And the book doesn't teach you that. Resources needed. Remember this one? We chose multi-value. So you can choose as many as you want. Cool. Yes, you did that. Awesome. Then over here on the total, uh, was it total amount that we just made? You created a formula that added these two together. So this field's all done, but it's a totally new field that's created from the formula you just made. All right. Just had to share because I think it's really cool. And of course, you have to know what you did, right? So, we are going to create a new query for the customer table. This is called an update query. And I'm telling you, the update query and the delete query, more people miss that for some reason. All right, so pay attention. It's not difficult. So, just pay attention. Maybe it's because it's a little different. So, we're going to create a query just like we've been doing. Create a query so we're going to go just a plain old-fashioned query design that's all plain and it's going to be for the customer table and we're going to close it now this is the trick pay attention there are two new tables two type of queries that we are fixing to cover the update query and the delete query they must be done using these buttons because if you don't, then it won't work right and you'll get it wrong, okay? So just to make sure, we are doing an update query right now. So all we've done is opened up a normal query and chose the table that we're gonna use and then we're choosing update, all right? Notice the bottom has update to. 
So whatever we choose, we'll be able to tell it what to update to. Now, in this case, we are going to choose the customer type. So double click customer type. And we are going to update, I'm at the bottom of page 160. Update to UNI, all right? So now the customer type for every existing record is going to be updated to UNI when we run this query. So just like we've been doing, we have an update query, make sure that's checked, and we're going to hit run. And this says you are about to update 15 rows. And if we want to do this, we say yes. It also warns you that if you change your mind, there is no undo. So what, what you do is what you do, which is a good reason why we save separate chapters, just in case we totally blow it. So we say yes, and then we close the query, and we do not save because we will not use this one again. So no save. Then according to the book, it is a great time to take a break.